welcome you all to this uh, course on electron diffraction and imaging. In today's class we will uh, uh, discuss about how to index diffraction pattern because whenever we do a microscopy to get crystallographic information about the sample we should be able to get uh, inf we can get information about the crystal structures essentially from the diffraction pattern okay. What for we index the diffraction pattern because when we do an examination of a sample in a microscope what we wanted to know is how different phases are distributed in that sample. This information is difficult to get in an X-ray diffraction. In an X-ray diffraction we can get information about the crystal structures okay what are the uh, crystal structures of the faces but we cannot get any information about how they are distributed how the grains are oriented all this information we cannot get it. That is precisely what we can get in a microscope and when we wanted to correlate microstructure to mechanical properties we should know information about not only how the what all the types of second phase particles are there what is their size distribution morphology and also how they are wha and what is the relationship between these various phases this information should also be obtained okay. Only when this information is available we can correlate uh, microstructure to different types of properties maybe mechanical magnetic and various types of properties okay. So that means that to get information about the relationship between the phases we should know what is the orientation relationship between the if you uh, because in the real sample these phases are distributed okay and the relationship is essentially in a three dimensional space. If we get diffraction pattern we know that the diffraction pattern is nothing but uh, uh, information about the crystal structure in reciprocal space. So that reciprocal space information also shows that same relationship. So by analyzing the diffraction pattern we can get information about the orientation relationship okay. Then another area in which we require is that all none of the materials are perfect materials they contain lot of defects that we know that the defects control the property of the material we wanted to identify what are the various types of uh, defects which are present in the material okay and how they are distributed for which electron microscopy is uh, one of the best techniques okay. When we wanted to characterize these defects okay we were using electron microscope we should try to image them using uh, different uh, diffraction vectors and then try it and from that visibility or invisibility criterion whether the for which condition uh, which g vector imaging the microstructure uh, the defect is visible or not from that we can get information about the defect structure. So in all these aspects the, what we require is that we have to index the diffraction pattern which we obtain. No, not only obtaining a diffraction pattern okay indexing the diffraction pattern if you wanted to use this to get useful information we should also know how to get the correct diffraction pattern that is also very important okay. Another most important aspect of an electron microscope is that from the same region of the sample we can get diffraction as well as imaging that is why we are able to do uh, able to get all this information about the orientation relationship and characterization of defects everything is possible because we are able to image the defect as well as from the same region we get the relevant diffraction pattern okay. So if you ob have obtained some diffraction pattern the first thing which we have to do it is we have to analyze them okay that is we have to index them and after indexing this has to be used for analysis and interpretation of the uh, uh, results on that basis we can get information about the distribution of uh, microstructures and characterization of uh, defects these aspects could be continued. As I had mentioned earlier we can use the microscope 
okay, both in imaging and diffraction mode. But even in the diffraction mode, I mentioned that we can use it in a parallel diffraction. Okay, this is what we call it as a, uh, a selected area diffraction mode, and another is a convergent beam electron diffraction. Okay, the convergent beam electron diffraction we have discussed earlier, and this we can use to get information about uh, not only the crystal structures and accurate lattice parameter of the samples, but we can also get information about the space group and point group symmetry. Okay. The parallel diffraction is what which is normally used in a conventional electron microscope to get information about the, uh, how the phases are distributed. These aspects we have discussed already, okay. but just for the sake of completeness, okay, to re, I will just recall these aspects a little bit before we go further to uh, understand okay, how to index the diffraction pattern. The main property of an objective lens essentially is that if the sample is a crystalline sample, okay, when the rays pass through that sample, okay, if we use a monochromatic electron beam in an electron microscope. So, these beams are scattered in various directions from every point on that sample surface and in some directions they uh, all the faces add together and that gives rise to constrictive interference and that is where we get the diffraction pattern. What happens when we introduce a lens? The lens is used to get a magnified view of the object that is one and another is that all the beams which are parallel to the optic axis are close to optic axis and parallel to each other okay, scattered from different regions of the sample. They are all focused to one particular point at the back focal plane. So, at the back focal plane of the SAM, uh, uh, objective lens, we get essentially the diffraction pattern and in the image plane, we get the magnified image of that sample. By putting apertures either in the object plane or in that image plane, we can decide what is the area from which we wanted to get the diffraction pattern. That means, let us take that simple case. We put an aperture here so that from this area of the microstructure, we can get a diffraction pattern and also the image only from that region. That is why I mentioned that in an electron microscope, okay, we can get both the diffraction and the microstructure from the same area of the sample. Okay. Now, the microscope can be operated okay, at different length scales. We know the wavelength of the radiation which we use in an electron microscope is lambda is, is of the order of 0 0.025 Armstrong for 200 kV radiation. Okay. So, this is the limit of resolution because of the various lens aberrations we normally get it in a conventional microscope. The resolution point to point resolution essentially is of the order of around uh, 0 0.2 nanometer. Okay. And since it is an electron beam, we can focus this beam when it falls on a sample using these various lenses to very fine beam or we can spread it out to a very large area. These are all the advantages which we have with the lens. So, this advantage can be used okay, to make the beam as small as possible and fall on a large small area, get a diffraction from that area and also an image from that area or make it fall on a large area, get diffraction from the various faces which are present as well as the matrix and also get that image uh, from that area. That is possible. And another uh, important aspect is that suppose this itself contains a lot of grains, nanocrystalline grains. Okay. Then also choosing an appropriate beam size, we can get information either from a single crystal or an average information uh, from uh, many areas of the uh, sample okay, from a, a large number of grains. Okay. This is an example which I had shown, it is an amorphous sample okay, where this is the image of that sample and uh, this uh, the amorphous region gives rise to 
a sort of a uh, ring pattern, diffuse ring pattern, okay. By analyzing this, we can get information about the radial distribution of the atoms, okay. This part of it I will not go into, okay. And quite often the samples can be uh, have very fine grain size and if that is that case, okay, when the grain size is very fine and they are all oriented in a random way, okay. The diffraction pattern which we get from that sample is essentially a circular ring pattern which we get it, okay. And uh, this is the sort of pattern which we will get it if we are looking at nano crystals which are there in the range of few nanometers, okay, maybe 10 to 20 nanometers or 10 to 100 nanometers, okay. If the particle size is slightly large, okay, in the micrometer range, then depending upon that aperture size use and depending upon the orientation of the various crystals, okay. If it is totally random, we should get a pattern like this. Otherwise, we will be getting spots on some specific rings, okay. These rings also could be analyzed to get information about, okay, the crystal structures. In many materials, the grain sizes are very large, okay. It could be of the order of uh, uh, maybe 1 micron to 50 micron or 1 micron to 100 micron. In such cases, then we can get information from each of the grains by controlling the beam size, okay. We can get information that is single crystal information we can get it from this pattern. This is one such pattern which is being shown corresponding to a diffraction pattern which is taken from this region. We can see that though this contains some precipitates, the region which is chosen is essentially uh, the matrix region, okay. And in this particular case, it is an FCC structure. We get a pattern which uh, diffraction pattern, okay. How to analyze and index this pattern? This is what it forms the subject of today's talk, okay. Suppose the sample is a deformed sample, okay, very heavily deformed. Then as you have studied in the course on phase transformation, texture occurs and in textured samples you can see that uh, you do not see a complete ring but you can see that uh, streaking of many of these diffraction spots could be observed in the diffraction pattern, okay. That is if we wanted to get complete information about a sample, often look getting diffraction pattern or microstructure in one orientation alone is not sufficient. We have to tilt that sample and uh, try to get diffraction pattern as well as images for different orientations, okay. This has to be done in a double tilt holder in the present day microscopes. But when we use uh, such holders, we assume that only in a a uh, sample where it is a single grain the beam is falling, okay. So then we are trying to uh, get the diffraction pattern from that particular region, okay. And when we tilt the sample, okay, as we know that the reciprocal lattice and the real structures are tied together. So, as we wrote the tilt the sample, the reciprocal lattice also will rotate. So, we know that the diffraction pattern which we obtain in an electron microscope is nothing but a one sheet of the reciprocal lattice plane, okay. So, because of that, since they are tied together and in a crystal the various planes and directions make some specific angles. And the, so, when we go from here to here are tilted or from, from 1 because here it is tilted from 0, 0, 1 to 1 bar 1, 3, okay, or we go from here to 0, 1, 2 pole, then the indexing of the patterns are to be consistent. For that purpose, we have to use a stereographic projection. Not only that stereographic projection can be used for indexing, this is for a cubic system. So, this is a 0, 0, 1 stereographic projection for a cubic system. This stereogram can also be used to decide in which direction we have to tilt it. That is if we tilt from here to in this direction, we will be reaching this zone axis because it will come somewhere here 1 bar 1 3. If from here to here if we tilt it, 
then the 0, 1, 2 so on will come. Okay. So, the stereogram can be used to consistently index the diffraction pattern. Okay. This we will talk about it uh, shortly. Okay. So, essentially what I had shown here is that how this tilting could be carried out. I mentioned that uh, uh, we can use the stereogram. Essentially what we do in a microscope is that since the Kukuchi bands are there, if we move along that is especially if the sample is slightly thick, the, we can get the Kikuchi pattern and we can move along the Kikuchi bands to come to different orientations. As you know that the Kikuchi band also can be used to get perfect uh, uh, correct orientation of that sample. Okay. The first thing which we have to do essentially is that to get information about uh, the microstructure, first we should go to a symmetric diffraction pattern. A symmetric pattern means that the beam is oriented okay, along a particular zone axis direction. Okay. What is the zone axis which we have uh, described earlier, but we will come to it a little bit later. Okay. And uh, then if we come to a symmetric uh, and uh, not only the zone axis, it is the low index zone axis, then what is going to happen is that we will be getting a symmetric patterns like this. We have to index these patterns, okay, uh, take these patterns and take corresponding images. Then what we do it is to identify the defects, you tilt that sample so that we reach two beam condition, so that only the central spot and one of the beam spots are there. That is how. Uh, uh, microscopy is being done. That is being covered in a uh, separate class. So, in this particular class we wanted to know that having taken a symmetric pattern, okay, how this pattern should be indexed. Okay. Two things which has to be as I mentioned, this pattern has to be indexed one and another is by after tilting we have reached another uh, zone axis okay, in which also we get a diffraction pattern. Since some particular angle of tilt has been done, to uh, given to the sample. Now, what happens is that from uh, here to this direction if we move, the planes are also moving. So, we cannot uh, index it randomly because we know that this pattern essentially corresponds to nothing but since I know what it is, I am just telling about it, it is a, a 0, 1, 1 type of a pattern, okay, so on axis pattern. We know that 0, 1, 1, it could be a specific value. Okay. But we have to find out what the specific value of the zone axis is because when I write it like this, it means that this pattern could be 110 or it could be 011. Or it could be 101. Okay. Or it could be 01 bar 1 like this we can have various. So, since we have given a specific tilt, we should be able to index it correctly and tell that what is the uh, zone axis corresponding to this, okay, which is the zone axis out of all the possible combinations. Because this is very important in defect analysis. So, that is what I meant that, that indexing has to be consistent with the tilting of the samples. Okay. So, now, now let us come back to indexing a uh, simple diffraction pattern. Okay. We have got a diffraction pattern like this, okay. we wanted to index this pattern. Okay. What are the information which we require to index this pattern? Okay. Generally that electron microscope, uh, diffraction in electron microscope is the not the one which is used to find out the crystal structure information. As I mentioned it is to find out the structure property correlation. So, if you wanted to find out what the crystal structure of the phases are, okay, that we could do an X-ray diffraction and get that information. Okay. We assume that it is a single crystal where what is the crystal structure we have got that information. Okay. And in this particular case, we assume, uh, assume that it is a cubic structure. Okay. And we assume, let us assume that it is an FCC structure which we have got it. Okay. Then, if it is an FCC structure, okay, and if we know the uh, lattice parameter, 
okay, a equals some value the lattice parameter is known in some nanometer. If you know the lattice parameters okay, then we can find out the d spacing corresponding to various planes like this 111 that is the allowed reflections what they are corresponding to 200, 220. These d spacings could be determined this table we can have okay. When I thought diffraction I mentioned that the wavelength into L the camera length equals d into d that is essentially if you take a diffraction pattern like this okay I am just uh, drawing that same pattern which you had obtained okay. This is the spacing of the diffraction spots in different directions okay. They are related to the planes which are giving rise to this diffraction pattern by this formula okay. What is lambda? Lambda is the wavelength of the radiation. Okay. What is L? L is the camera length. What is camera length? Camera length is nothing but if you have a sample here okay, and the beam is falling on T, this is the direct beam and if the diffracted beam is coming like this in this particular direction. Okay. If we image them in this particular plane, okay, what is the distance from the sample to the imaging uh, plane? that distance is called as the L because this will decide what is going to be the magnification in the diffraction spot. Okay. This can be related to the uh, d spacing in uh, of, the, of the real lattice okay, or d spacing in a direct space as well as the corresponding reciprocal lattice vector. Okay. So using this formula okay, in a microscope when we operate it okay we have these values are there the camera length we can choose and change it the way we want normally it is uh, used between uh, uh, 50 centimeters to 100 centimeters that's what we normally use it okay depending upon that that size of this uh, pattern will change or the magnification will change okay that means that uh, what we measure that is in this pattern we are trying to measure d1 and d2. Okay. Suppose we wanted to measure these various distances like then this you take to be d3 okay. In the diffraction pattern which we have taken we measure it okay. Since we know the uh, energy of the radiation we know what this value is. So this camera constant is known. So what we measure essentially is this d okay. So if we measure this d then this d that is small d which is because I will put it as dg okay this is corresponding this is dg okay. That means that once we have measured this value we know and this lambda into L is called as the camera constant. So knowing the camera constant and measuring the distance of the diffraction spot from the central spot okay, using this formula we can get information about the spacing between the planes which are responsible for the diffraction. Okay. If it is an FCC crystal and uh, using diffraction we have got a prior information then we can compare these distances and find out what could be the reflections which this could correspond to. So that way now we have uh, got some information about what is that spot which this corresponds to, what is the diffraction spot okay. Then okay, there will be some errors which will be associated with it. Okay. Then to verify it doubly make sure 
that suppose we assume that this corresponds to some particular one uh, corresponding to 0 0 type okay. and this distance corresponds to uh, 2 to 0 type of planes which could be responsible for it okay. Then we have to find out whether it is 2 0 0 okay or it could be as well as uh, 2 bar 0 0 okay which are the planes which are giving rise uh, which this part could be indexed. To get that information we measure the angle between these two parts okay. If we measure this angle between these two uh, vectors okay then we know that the cos theta between two planes or two vectors equals this is uh, g1 dot g2 divided by modulus of g1 into modulus of g2. Using this formula okay, this in the case of a cubic system it will turn out to be nothing but cos theta will turn out to be h1 h2 plus k1 k2 plus l1 l2 divided by root of h1 square plus k1 square plus l1 square h2 square plus k2 square plus l2 square okay. So, this way we can get this angle also okay depending upon what that angle get. In this specific case if we consider this angle we know that between these two planes will turn out to be 45 degree and if it is between 2 bar 0 0 and 2 to 0 the angle will turn out to be 135 degrees okay. So, if this angle is 45 we can index this to be 2 0 0 and this part could be indexed to be 2 to 0 okay. Then if you take this part 2 bar 0 0 this makes an angle of with respect to this naturally an angle of 135 degree okay. And another information we find in this diffraction pattern in this specific pattern is that this value of d1 and d3 turns out to be that same okay and the angle between these two in this specific case turns out to be 90 degree okay. We know that for the family of planes 2 0 0 type okay if you take it for between 2 0 0 0 0 0 2 0 and 0 0 2 for all of them okay angle between these planes will be 90 degree okay. So, that way we can index this to be okay either 2 0 0 and in this specific case we index this to be since this is taken as 2 to 0 this is indexed to be 0 to 0 okay. Once this diffraction this is the way in which we index the diffraction pattern okay because the type of information which we look for is essentially to characterize the defects we have some prior information about the crystal structure then we can go ahead and do it very easily okay. Otherwise it is a little bit more complicated that is the part which I will not talk about it okay because normally in a microscope when we use it to get information in steels or many of the nickel base alloys or aluminum base alloys is essentially to get information about the orientation of the grays and the type of defects which are present how precipitates are distributed that is all for which this type of analysis is what is necessary in most of the uh, conventional electron microscopy. And this is the way in which we can analyze it. I will repeat again what we have to do it is that we measure the distance from the central spot various parts okay and then uh, we take the using this formula find out the uh, d spacing corresponding to it. So, from the d spacing and uh, since we know the lattice parameter of the crystal already has been determined we can find we will have a table we can construct a table of values for the different d spacing from which we can calculate what it could correspond to. Then we have to find out okay which are the ones which are specifically corresponding to that that can be found out from taking this uh, 
measuring this angle. The other way in which also we can do it is that we know that between D200 and D220, the ratio between them if we take it, they have to come in some specific values for the various planes, okay. That way also we can find out because we have got some rough information and we measure this ratio also. If that ratio between uh, and this uh, D100 and D110 if we take it, that is D110 by One zero zero. Okay. In this case, it will turn out to be a by root two, and here it is a. So it will be one by root two. That is the way the separations will come. Okay. And that will be around uh, zero point uh, seven zero seven. Okay. This way, using these formulas, we can get this. Uh, index the uh, diffraction pattern. Okay. And we know that in the case of uh, cubic lattices, angle between planes okay, and the, uh, uh, that is when we measure angle between the uh, planes as well as the angle between the uh, plane normals, they are that same. Okay. So, so far we talked about indexing one particular pattern. Okay. Now, suppose we wanted the consistency is required in indexing of this pattern. Okay. Okay. That is as I had mentioned earlier, okay. this pattern could be indexed after doing this analysis we indexed it at 0, 0, 0. 2, 0, 0, rest of the spots will come. Okay. Most important thing is that to reduce error in the measurement, okay. if many spots are there, try to measure distance from one spot to another spot as far as possible, choose many spots and measure the actual distance and divide it by the uh, number of spots which we have covered and that way we can reduce the error in measurement of these distances d. Okay. And this is the way the indexing of this pattern has been done. Okay. To have a consistency in indexing of these patterns, how we go about and do it. Okay. We can use stereographic projection also. This is the 0, 0, 001 stereogram project, uh, stereographic projection okay, for a cubic system is given. Okay. And you, as I had mentioned, uh, in the earlier class, the stereographic projection. Okay, if this is the zero zero one, on the great circle corresponding to it, okay, which is the primitive circle in this case, all the spots which are lying will be ninety degree away from it. Okay, that is, this is uh, this zero zero one corresponds to a pole corresponding to the zero zero one. Okay, and what that great circle means is that circle which is passing through the sphere. Okay, which is 90 degree with respect to. If we look here, this is 100, 110 because here the stereogram tells only the angular relationship between the various planes. Okay, and so that, and here it will not tell about the uh, structure factor considerations, which reflections are absent or which are there. That condition, if you know the crystal structure and the lattice parameter, it's already available. On that basis, we can get that information because whether it is been in 200 zero zero and 110 plane, or the angular relationship does not change. So, the stereogram could be used to get that angular relationship. So, this way, if we look at it with respect to this, okay, the way the stereogram is being used, this is the direction because in crystallography, as I had mentioned earlier, that from top to bottom uh, is where we index the 100 direction and left to right is 001 direction and the perpendicular to the screen is where the 00 is a direction is used or the 001 direction. That way if we do it, the 100 or corresponding the 200 that will come here, this is the 200 okay. and then 90 degree away from it 010 comes 
at 45 degree with respect to it 110 uh, that is essentially here it has to be 220 okay. So, this way if we look at it this indexing which has been done also has been done consistent with the stereogram which is there okay. And the diffraction patterns which we normally get it in a microscope okay these we call it as 0 order Lavier zone patterns. What this essentially means has been discussed in the diffraction, but just to recollect it what I will mention essentially is that the relationship between the reciprocal lattice and that is one for constructive interference to take place you have taken the condition that the k dot r should be equal to m an integer where m can change from uh, 0 to uh, uh, any value positive or negative okay. When k dot r equals 0 Okay. That means that what is R? R is a direction in the real lattice. Then for this particular R, we can have many values of uh, k which satisfy this condition. All of them are perpendicular to it. Okay. In a diffraction pattern also, okay, that is exactly what happens. If you look here, when we have indexed it, we have indexed these patterns. Okay. When we wanted to find out what is going to be the zone axis, okay. zone axis in this particular case, especially in the case of electron diffraction, okay, can be found out by taking the cross product of these two vectors. If we take it, that will give a vector which is perpendicular to these two, that is going to be the zone axis. What is the reason uh, for this? Because since the wavelength of the radiation is extremely small in the case of an electron diffraction okay. The Bragg angle theta is very small okay less than 1 degree and because of which what is essentially is going to happen is that since the Bragg angle is uh, uh, small almost when the electron beam is travelling in this particular direction in that sample almost all the planes which are very nearly parallel to the beam direction they are the ones which are going to give rise to diffraction. The beams which are parallel to the beam direction if you look at the inter planar spacing that is going to come perpendicular to it that means that and in this particular uh, direction is where the k vectors are there, the diffraction vectors are going to be there in the k space. That means that the direction r and the k is perpendicular to each other, okay. This is what is called as the zeroth order Lavais zone condition, okay. So, you should remember that when we have identified these vectors, okay, then if these two vectors we call it as uh, g1 and g2. Okay, then G1 cross G2 will give the uh, beam direction or it will give that UVW the beam direction we could get the vector corresponding to it. Okay. So, essentially now we have covered how to get how to index a pattern okay, and then how to find out the beam direction. Okay. For that beam direction in this case turns out to be 0, 0, 001. Okay. Then we are trying to use the stereogram also to check consistently whether this indexing has been done correctly and find that it is so. Okay. And here okay, the same thing what I mean, that is as I mentioned since the Bragg angle is uh, extremely small for electron diffraction. If the beam is travelling in this direction, okay, this is a crystal which I had shown, 
okay, FCC crystal and this is 100 plane, this is uh, uh, 010 plane okay. and then the interparticle inter planar spacing 010 is in this direction. Okay. The same direction is where the reciprocal light spectra also here it is going to be in this direction these vectors are perpendicular to it. Okay. When they are perpendicular to it that gives rise to okay, that means that when the beam enters like this, this plane also can give rise to diffraction, these pl set of planes also can give rise to diffraction, these set of planes 110 planes can also give rise to diffraction. So, the spots corresponding to all of them we see in this diffraction spots. Okay. So, this uh, the axis okay, the direction in which the beam is passing through this we call it as the zone axis. Okay. Because uh, then I showed that if the sample is tilted because here the sample is tilted by an angle of 45 degree then we get a pattern like this. Okay. This pattern okay, the sample could be tilted in whichever way we want it okay, depending upon the type of tilt which we have given suppose I tilt it from here to in this direction and reach 0 1 1. Okay that is what it has essentially been done. Then this pattern can be indexed the zone axis is corresponding to 0 1 1 okay. and then indexing of this part can be done okay, using this stereogram because for 0 1 1 okay, if it is going to be the zone axis corresponding to that the all the diffraction parts should be 90 degree away from each for the 0 order that means that they should lie on a great circle okay, uh, corresponding to this particular pole. The great circle corresponding to this pole which is 90 degree away from it is this one. Now, we can see that 110, 1 bar 1, 0 1 bar 1 1, 1 bar 1 bar 1, 2 bar 0 0 these are all the poles which are lying on this. Okay. But out of which uh, this is not allowed. So, the reflections which will be 0 1 bar 1 1 0 0. So, this will be 2 0 0 okay, that is what it is indexed. Then when we tell we can come to 1 1 bar 1 and then when we rotate in that same direction 0 2 bar 2 when we rotate in this direction we will be reaching 1 bar 1 bar 1 then this comes in. This. So, essentially to index these parts we have used it because we have tilted from here and reached here then this is the type of spot patterns which have to come consistent with the tilt. Okay. From this you can understand that using stereographic projection we can index the patterns uh, correctly. Suppose the sample has been instead of tilted the tilting is because that is if the sample is uh, the beam direction I can tilt the sample so that if you tilt the sample like this this beam direction will come and I can tilt the sample like this also then the beam direction is changing the same tilt could be given then instead of reaching it here I can reach this particular zone axis. Okay. If this particular zone axis I have reached that is why I should uh, note down also what is the direction in which I am tilting that sample. Okay. Then the zone axis the pattern appears that same now the indexing if you look at it this will be 200 0, 0, this will become 111 1, 1, this part will become 0 2 2. So, indexing of the spots will change this is very important in defect analysis. Okay. Here what I have uh, done is that same thing what I have talked about with respect to the both the patterns are being shown here. Okay. You can see that this is the 0 0 1 zone axis pattern okay. and uh, all the spots which are coming is because that sample is oriented the crystal is oriented like this the beam is passing through this direction. Okay. If I rotate the crystal in this particular direction okay, then what it will happen this direction is uh, uh, 0 1 1 okay, that 0 1 1 direction comes. So, since this plane is essentially the beam direction these are all the diffracting planes okay. with respect to the beam direction these planes when we rotate it only this is getting rotated. So, they still are going to be in that same position. So, the spots corresponding to them will appear at the same position that is why you can see that 200 reflection comes okay. and uh, now 
110 type of planes or 220 type of planes have become parallel to a beam direction. So those parts come but if you look at these planes 100 type of plane when we are rotated they have become inclined with respect to the beam direction. So they do not uh, give rise to the 0 third or Lavada fraction they will not appear. So those parts have vanished okay. So not only using this picture we can not only logically argue out okay which reflections are going to come okay. Using the stereographic projection we can easily index the pattern consistently. Suppose the tilt has been done in such a way that uh, it is rotated from here to here in the clockwise direction. If I rotate it clockwise direction 45 degree then as it is being tilted now you find that the direction this comes the beam direction turns out to be uh, nothing but uh, 0 1 bar 1 okay. Then the indexing of this pattern as I had mentioned earlier will change and that is the way an indexing has to be done. This is how a spot pattern will appear okay. uh, in the case of a BCC lattice. Okay. This is 0, 0, 001 uh, zone axis, okay. this is uh, 0, 0011 1 and this is a uh, 111 zone axis. 111 zone axis from here to here we have tilted. Okay. Then the indexing is always done consistently if we use a stereogram. Okay. I hope uh, it is uh, clear to you people. If the sample is uh, ordered sample then we can get some super lattice reflections in between that is what it is being shown. Okay. These patterns are essentially a computer generated because that simulation of the diffraction pattern can be done when we know the lattice parameter and what is the crystal structure. Okay. In fact uh, what I would advise is that for the various zone axis using uh, stereographic projection okay, and knowing the crystal structures uh, for example you can take simple cubic structure or uh, a body centered structure and try to find out for various uh, low index zone axis how the diffraction patterns will appear and you can like in this particular case you can try to uh, uh, you have to index them consistently okay, as we tilt the sample from one direction to another direction in the beam because the direction of tilt also we can get it from the same uh, stereographic projection and corresponding to that how the spot should appear that information is also contained in the stereogram that is why using stereogram we can get uh, we can index the spot patterns consistently. Okay. This is an another example where it is tilted to 1 on 2 zone axis direction okay. in this uh, with a consistent uh, so when using a stereogram it has been uh, indexed okay. no not uh, this is corresponding to 1 2 3 not 1 1 2 this is no 1 bar 1 bar 2 3 and the great circle corresponding to it is this particular one this great circle on which the various reflections are lying okay. Uh, from these reflections now you immediately find out uh, using the structure factor rules which are the reflections which should appear okay and that way this pattern has been indexed consistently okay. So these patterns which we have considered so far are very simple uh, uh, patterns okay, from a single phase of a material. Okay. Quite often what can happen is that even in the matrix region where we consider there are some second phase particles are distributed like this. Okay. If they are distributed okay, depending upon their orientation they can also give rise to extra reflections corresponding to them. If we index these both the matrix as well as the second phase particle okay, then we can get information about the orientation relationship between the matrix which is necessary for correlating microstructure to mechanical properties. Okay. This is a uh, from a gamma prime phase where by indexing it uh, we could identify it that it is uh, uh, orientation and the cube to cube orientation relationship between the matrix and the precipitate. But in this particular case if we look at it 
this is from uh, another uh, uh, diffraction pattern which is little bit more complex where you can see that there are many reflections are there. To identify to index this diffraction pattern the first thing which we have to do it is that we have to identify uh, the reciprocal lattice sections because the periodicity of the lattice has to be maintained in the reciprocal lattice section as well. So, in this if you try to look at it all these intense parts they give rise to one particular type of a periodic structure. Then if we look from here to this parts which are there in the, this one they give rise to another periodic structure. Then if we see the spots which are like this here this one this one okay, this one okay, they give rise to and then another one this gives rise to another type of a periodic structure. So, many types of periodic structures are there since this has been analyzed I am talking about it. It is not a very trivial this one this is the one which you have to learn and this will take yeah, this comes through experience by analyzing first the uh, best thing to do is to first analyze simple patterns from the matrix that is the way you learn how to index the diffraction pattern. Then you go into a complex uh, patterns where the matrix plus precipitate is there. Here in this pattern if you look at it there are diffraction patterns due to matrix plus 3 variants of a particular phase and plus uh, 2 variants of an another precipitate phase all are embedded uh, there in this diffraction pattern okay. This pattern which has been analyzed which is given here okay one corresponding to this one and the another corresponding to the second phase okay that is both the phases are present here how it is being indexed. But uh, when you have the final result it looks quite uh, trivial but the route which you have to take it to get it okay is not that trivial okay this which you will learn when you try to do some assignments okay. This is from a single grain what we have considered where the matrix plus precipitate. Suppose we wanted to find out orientation between this grain and uh, this particular grain or how that interface plane or even in this second phase particle how the interfaces look like. If you wanted to find out we have to get a diffraction pattern from both the regions together or from this region and this region across it okay different types of patterns and then analyze them okay and then try to get information about the uh, interface okay. That part of it I will not go in this present lecture okay that is beyond the scope of this uh, uh, course okay. And another important aspect which you have to think is that this super lattice reflections which you see they correspond to some of the ordered phases which are non cubic okay. So, for non cubic phases which are present okay for each of these phases standard stereograms are not available okay. Once you know the lattice parameter A, B and C as I had mentioned in the class on stereogram okay you can construct stereogram corresponding to various uh, poles for those phases those stereograms could be used okay to index the patterns consistently okay. So, as I had mentioned okay overall once these sort of patterns have been analyzed we can use them to get information about the orientation relationship okay. Then suppose uh, these phases have some specific habit planes are there what is the habit plane on which that uh, second phase is lying then what is the interface uh, plane what is the grain boundary plane like if it is a low angle or a small angle grain boundaries. All this information could be obtained okay using this diffraction pattern analyzing these diffraction patterns okay. What is essentially important is that first analyzing the diffraction patterns okay each pattern and identifying what zone axis they could correspond to and using the tilt information of the sample which is available okay. The indexing of the patterns have to be made consistent okay so that we know that if we tilt from one particular orientation to another orientation in a specific direction in the diffraction pattern 
this is the this is the specific type of reflection which will be coming okay once such an indexing has been done okay uh, then those index patterns could be used when we have got corresponding images of the uh, microstructure to characterize various types of defects in the material okay uh, in one class uh, uh, it is not uh, we cannot cover everything about indexing of the various types of diffraction pattern. What I had told in this class is just a brief philosophy of how to go about and index the diffraction pattern ok. You understand it much better when you index various types of uh, diffraction pattern uh, from simple crystal structures then you uh, gain experience and also confidence okay how to go about consistently analyze the diffraction patterns and use it to interpret the microstructural observations i will stop here now thank you